it, Savannah O'Gwen from Savannah Land 2. Today I'm sharing another version of this week's Paper Smooches Sparks Designer Drafts Challenge. Here's the sketch that I'll be following, and actually I'm going to change it just a bit more than I did last time. <laughs> I've rotated it, and I think I'm going to put um, a lot of words on that bottom panel. I'm also going to extend it out a bit. Um, I'm going to make the card a bit taller than an A2. The bottom panel is going to be on a curve. And that circle, <laughs> I know I cannot draw, but that is an animal type. <laughs> Praise the Lord for Ken Stamps because I cannot draw whatsoever. And then the side panel is going to be a bit short. Um, so that is the design that I'm going to try to follow and try to make. Hopefully everything works out. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to do is make my bottom panel and I'm going to actually die cut the animal and the curve as one piece and this is super simple to do and I just love that dog image. It reminds me of Olsen who literally just walked in my room. He's making a lot of noises. Um, so okay back to this. In order to die cut one panel, all you have to do is stack your plates so that your die hangs out a bit. Whenever your die hangs out, it doesn't cut it, so you can just run the whole thing straight through your die cutting machine. And I'll show you how that worked here. It didn't even cut the bottom. It cut right to where I wanted it to stop. I love it. That's a super cool technique. I wish I would have thought of that myself. Now I'm going to die cut the hill. I think that's what I'm going to call this curve. It's like a hill or the curve part. And all I'm going to do is use my borders die. And um, it does hang off the plates a bit, but that doesn't matter because it won't. I'm not cutting it all the way through. I'm not sending that piece all the way through. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. So I did that for one side. I'm flipping it so that I can do it for the other side. And I'm just deciding what part of my borders die that I'm going to use. And I like this side better because it makes the curve go like he really is on a hill. And I'm going to run this through and you can see that I stopped right where the die was. And then I'm going to turn my paper just a bit so that I can die cut it one more time. No die was hurt during this process. <laughs> I leave my dies hang out all the time, and I've never heard any of them. So, anyway, here is the finished panel, and I just love how that looked. I'm just checking to make sure everything was cut. And I do have to um, hand cut the center piece, but that's not a problem. I just use a craft knife and remove the center piece. And there it is, so cute! Now I've pulled out several stamps that have to do with um, a birthday theme and my idea was that I wanted to put a whole bunch of words stamped in my Radiant Neon Electric Coral ink because it matches that paper perfectly and I wanted to just layer them all over this bottom panel, uh, panel and uh, stamp it up. I just thought that would look really cool. Monochromatic and just, actually I don't even think it's, yeah it is one color, monochromatic, yeah. <laughs> but when I finished with my sediment design, I literally, you just saw it, I just flicked them off. I'm like, that's not what I'm going to do. I need a simpler design. <laughs> so all of that work for nothing. What are you going to do? And then I die cut some ones. Now this card is for my cousin's baby. She'll be turning one in November. And I cut a number one from both the numbers and the digits dies. And I wasn't going to use them both, but I didn't know you could layer them on top of each other. So cool! So that's what I'm going to do. It's a subtle design because they're both in black, but it's super, super cool. You'll see it in the photo at the end. Okay, so now I'm just deciding from those stamps that I already pulled out which ones I want to use. And that side panel that is a little bit shorter, I'm going to use washi tape to create it. 
And I've done this several times before. All I do is pull out a scrap piece of paper and then use my washi tape. I lay it down and um, layer it so that it makes a design. And I decided on the gray because I really wanted a simple design and I didn't really want anything flashy because I already have the neon on there. So now I'm just lay um, laying this on my card uh, just to see how I want to do it. And I'm really just thinking about it. Now I have to say that this card did take like 30 minutes to make. It went really quick. It's taking a little bit longer in this video. <laughs> Okay, the video is not 30 minutes, but it's just, maybe I didn't speed it up as fast, but regardless, nothing I can do about it now. Okay, now you can see, oh my goodness, that ink matches perfectly to that uh, cardstock. I just love it. And you can see that I've pulled out a couple of rhinestones. I wasn't sure what I was going to use. And I'm now going to attach my card pieces. It's coming together, I promise. <laughs> Just trying to decide how big I want it. And right here I use a pin to um, decide the size of my card. And I want to say, note to self, don't ever use a pin again. Because when I cut, I didn't cut the pin off because that's where I needed it to be. Usually if I draw a thing, I use a pencil, but I don't know where it was. And so hopefully my cousin doesn't look at the edges of the card because you can see a pin mark. <laughs> Note to self. Okay, so now I'm just deciding if I want to pop a color with my rhinestones or with my enamel dots. And I've decided to go with these super pretty light pink rhinestones. But right here I realized that I hadn't attached every piece down. So now I'm going to attach this bottom panel using foam dots. Well, a foam strip or whatever. And I'm also going to attach the number one with foam as well. And I'm moving everything because here's another lesson learned. When I ink things, sometimes I smear the ink or get the ink on the back panel when I didn't want to. So I've moved everything over so that the ink doesn't get everywhere. <laughs> I wish I would have learned that with my pen mark. But anyway. So now I'm just going to finish up the card, literally super, super simple. I'm going to attach my one, and this card is so cute. Oh, it's so adorable. And I'm just going to attach a couple of those rhinestones. I'm going to attach a big one. And I really like when people make it go underneath an edge. I wish I thought of that. Well, I did just then, but not as an original idea. And then... There's the card. Isn't that so cute? Super simple. Oh, wait. I have to mess with it. <laughs> I decided that I wanted to put some silver thread behind the number one. You just can't have a card without thread. And I literally messed up my card with the glue because I had to rip the foam off and it wasn't sticky anymore. So I put glue on the back. And when I pressed it down, it popped up and got glue everywhere. But I just cleaned it off right there with my finger and held the one a little bit longer. And there it is. There's the card. Oh, still messing with the thread. <laughs> that is so typical of me. I need to stop doing that. And here it is. Okay, let's pull over the sketch. I think I followed it. Well, my new design pretty well. I would give this a 90% of that sketch, but of the original, I would probably say this is 75%, maybe 70. You'll have to leave a comment and tell me what you think the percentage is. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you will join in the fun with the Paper Smooches Sparks Challenges. You could win a gift certificate to the Paper Smooches store. Please leave a comment below with a link to one of your creations or a link up to our Inspired by Virtual Smooches post. I'd love to check out your project. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>